In the past century, humanity has been pulled from the furnace of worldwide epidemics and saved from the clutches of military dictatorships by the men and women of science. Now that we've come to consider them almost venerable, what if we were to discover that the attitudes of these professionals have taken a turn toward the darker side? Are the people of science today serving an agenda of integrity or some vast corporate policy wherein the consumer is the unwitting guinea pig for the testing of profit-making pharmaceuticals? Because if there's anywhere that science could be more corrupt, it would be in the, it, within the company itself, because there, those scientists are really profit-motivated. Despite these consequences, the lure of short-term gain through fudged research is undeniable, and once indulged, becomes science fraud. Although incidents of science fraud have increased in recent years, this is not a new problem. Some of the biggest names in history have pulled off some of the biggest scams. It is widely known, for example, that Isaac Newton, father of modern physics, intentionally skewed data to make the work of a rival appear less important. Since his competitor's philosophy clashed with his own theory of universal gravitation, Newton improved some of his calculations on the velocity of sound and precision of the equinoxes to overshadow and malign the work of his challenger. The 19th century monk Abbey Gregor Mendel founded modern gene theory through the breeding and crossbreeding of pea plants. His results were so suspiciously perfect, however, that they prompted a later investigation which revealed that Mendel had tailored his data to help justify his theories. In a modern day example of scientific discovery gone wrong, the results of the cold fusion experiments of Stanley Pons and Martin Fleischmann were rushed into the public arena. Fusion reactions occur when two hydrogen atoms uh, become so hot that they fuse together, releasing a tremendous amount of energy. Because current technology demands that more energy has to be put into a reaction than comes out, uh, it hasn't been economically viable. Uh, however, Stanley Pons of the University of Utah and Martin Fleischmann of the University of Southampton claimed that they could create a fusion reaction at room temperature and make fusion energy a reality uh, with the potential of making uncounted billions of energy dollars. When a colleague working at a nearby university threatens to undermine Pons and Fleischmann's claim to their cold fusion discovery by going public with proprietary information, the two respected chemists are compelled by peers and legal advisors to bypass scientific convention and the accepted practices of the peer review system. There's a hypothesis, an idea. The idea is tested in, in the laboratory. Uh, it's written up in a journal. It undergoes peer review, which means people, experts in the field, look at that information. They test its validity. They ask questions about its validity. Then it's published in the journal. Then, of course, the scientific uh, community reads it. Then the scientific community tries to test, the, can they repeat this experiment? And then, after that kind of scrutiny, it goes out uh, into the public domain. Others in the field are eager to reproduce the work of Pons and Fleischmann. The public benefits of such a discovery would be economically and environmentally revolutionary. Well, a cold fusion is a perfect example of how science works and judges its own kind. Numerous attempts to duplicate the uh, alleged results uh, by several independent laboratories uh, failed miserably. There weren't any marginal results that could even give hope to any cold fusion that worked uh, uh, the way that Pons and Fleischmann claimed. Uh, as a result, cold fusion was denounced. Uh, and all funding for cold fusion was cut off. In conclusion, we have no evidence in our laboratory with any of our samples for fusion. I'm very sorry that uh, uh, Professor Lewis has no information on the tritium levels. That is available and is available in the correction list to mm -hmm. the paper. We know the foreground, we don't know the background. I would like to the specifically... Background, I beg your pardon, the background is available in oh, the corrections might, to the paper. That might be. I would like to specifically well, hear whether or not helium... Don't, 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 Could we go on, Could we don't go on to the questions, off. please? Certainly. This was the official story surrounding the cold fusion debacle. However, in subsequent years, independent scientists working to duplicate the work of Pons and Fleischmann were indeed able to produce similar results. But I do know that a great discovery has been made, and I do know that it's completely true, and I do know 
that nuclear reactions can take place in the cold. And I think that's one of the greater things to be discovered in this century. Once Pons and Fleischmann made the choice to take their claim public prior to publication in an accepted scientific journal, they were sitting ducks for the scientific establishment and the guardians of the peer review system. It was just a very unfortunate, uh, partly it was a very unfortunate time to make such an announcement uh, for various re political reasons really. The situation in the United States, the situation with regard to the program in hot fusion, that was against it, but uh, also, of course, was the fact that uh, we were not ready to make such an announcement. Journal publication is considered a necessary first step in establishing scientific merit and legitimacy. Data should be published in the most reputable of scientific journals. It should not be published first in the newspapers or other media. It should not be quite frankly, disseminated through the popular media until, in fact, the information can be replicated. Science moves forward by having people uh, research certain claims on one side or the other, and that, in fact, they are able to resolve it by doing more experimentation or more tests so that they can figure out what is exactly, uh, it, what it is that is actually going on. The cold fusion experiments of Pons and Fleischmann have been widely replicated over the past 10 years. It was absolutely clear in 1991 that there was a staggering excess heat source in water that would lead to ultimately technologies that would change the world forever. Today, we can no longer say that the evidence is overwhelmingly compelling. It is now 100% certain. The scientific establishment, in continuing to uphold the claim that the two respected chemists handed the world a gold brick, has now itself come under scrutiny, believed by many to be conspiring to suppress the confirmed results of the monumental breakthrough that is cold fusion. If this is so, then the scientific establishment is perpetrating a fraud of its own. But why? Why relegate a discovery that could result in pollution-free, unlimited energy to oblivion. The work of both Pons and Fleischmann were considered bogus, and thus no further funding, and their careers destroyed. Uh, they left their respective universities and shamed by the scientific community. With Pons and Fleischmann and cold fusion rubbed out, hot fusion or nuclear energy research could continue as the grant funding conduit of choice. With money as the primary motivating factor, it is clear that the knife of science fraud can and does cut both ways. The rigidity of the peer review, or as some would call it, the sneer review system, boldly dismissed the work of two highly respected and accomplished professionals, doing so despite mounting favorable data supporting their claims. When the Wright brothers first flew in 1903, no papers covered it at all because everybody was convinced, certainly the American press, that heavier than air flight was totally impossible. All the top scientists said this is nonsense. But it wasn't for about five years that eventually they realized, my goodness, this is real. Heavier than air flight is possible. And I think a similar thing is going to happen with so-called cold fusion, although it's seldom cold and often isn't fusion at all. The rush to announce results, to publish work, and establish ownership comes as a result of massive competition. In the case of cold fusion, the fraud perpetrated against Pons and Fleischmann by the scientific community has cost the people